right, so we're going to start on the trim now. Trim is our next project, uh, and I'm going to start with the front lip on the car. Uh, I'm not sure what the material is. I mean, it's plastic, uh, but it has um, it has some funky. Maybe it's primer or something. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to try to try to restore it here with some uh, with using some solution finish, which is a uh, conditioner and restorer of plastic. Uh, Chris West made this stuff, and, and it works great uh, for for plastic so we're going to try that first so the reason why I'm doing the front lip first is we'll get the solution finish on it get the plastic whatever that does it does uh, get that uh, on there and then I'll go and do the rest of the trim and the glass and then we'll come back around and and finish the the uh, the front lip with uh, with a coating or with a trim coat with uh, which we're going to do Wolf's Wolf's Nano trim coat on it. So first step of the procedure is to use uh, isopropyl alcohol. I've got some Walgreens 91% IPA. I've got two uh, Bounty uh, paper towels uh, which we'll use to prep the surface. We're going to use these on use this on all the surface. Uh, we're going to use. I have this. I don't know. I always I always get these things. I don't know where. Uh, this was in some box of something uh, that I got and so I have a microfiber applicator which will be ruined after uh, after we, we put a solution finish on it and apply it and then we'll wipe it down with one of my uh, multi-purpose towels which will probably ruin this towel as well uh, so we'll, we're not we're not out too much and that you know, these towels are a buck 90 and then this was free so kind of works out so let's get set up to, to get working on it. Alright I had a, uh, another OG -er subscriber, whatever you want to call it, drop by. So I was giving him a tour. Any, any of you guys, you want to drop by, just shoot me an email, mad at obsessedgarage.com. You want to come buy stuff or just come check it out, come on by. Love to have you. Just don't hold me up too long because I want to make the videos. So I'm using 91% IPA Bounty. This thing is probably going to hold on to lots of dirt. So prior to solution finish, we want to get the surface prepped. You can see I'm taking off something. So procedurally, as I, as you know, the, at least the way I think about this, so we're 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 messing with IPA around the trim here, right? but I'm gonna probably hit a little bit of the paint occasionally here and there. So the way I think about this is I've got a coat of Paralock and Colonite on here. Let's say that I hit the Colonite a little bit. I'm gonna be putting a second layer on. So when I do the windows and the trim around the windows and all these different surfaces, all these different areas, uh, I'm able to at least get it, if I did happen to affect the, the last last pre, the last layer, the protectant, I'm at least going to get another coat of wax on. I've always, I used to stress about when do I do the trim, when do I do the glass, do I do it first, do I do it after, do I do it later, do I do it some other time? And again, I found that a good process, a good way to do it is this way. Do this in between my layers. And a lot of times, actually, what I end up doing is I end up doing the power lock. Then, in between power lock and colonite, I'll end up doing all the trim. So then, then I'll you know then I'll get the first layer of colonite on, and then my second layer the other day, the next day. But timing-wise, it just didn't work out that way for this. So I'm going to go in and keep cleaning, keep removing this, getting this prepped, put solution finish on it here in a second. Man, I'm getting you up close here in this video series. So here's a solution finish. Check the product. This is just a microfiber applicator. I think you can use any kind of applicator. You're going to ruin it, so I wouldn't use something too, anything too fancy. If you do get a little bit of this on the paint, it's not the world's worst thing. You can just wipe it off. Just the IPA alone clean this up quite a bit. So we put some solution finish on our applicator and we put it on. Put a little on the tip here. Get up in there. So 
So I kind of slop it on there and then we're going to follow with our towel and flatten it out. And then we're going to coat on top of this later. This applicator is going to work pretty well here on this. And then we're adjusting the exhaust, exhaust clamp. So I won't need to use solution finish, I don't think, on any of the other trim of the car, just this. And again, I don't even know that this is the right product for this type of finish, but I figure it can't hurt. Just keep adding a little more. Okay, so I'm going to go finish that and I'll come back and I'll show you when we wipe it off. I like to, even though we're going to jack up our microfiber towel, you let this sit for a minute or two. I like to wipe this off with the towel microfiber because then I can get more even, even finish. Tuck this in there. I don't want to wipe it super hard and take everything off. I want to let it continue to sort of soak in and penetrate. But I'm just going to take my towel and you know just gently wipe the excess off. Make sure I also get it off the paint as well. Yeah, that didn't really didn't really do much. And darkened it up a little bit. So there must be like a this must be a, like a poly or fiberglass lip with some primer on it. All right, so I stayed true to my promise here that I wasn't going to take the wheels off. And I didn't. We'll save that for another video series. And these are already pretty well denibbed, so nothing I need to do there. But I'm going to hit them with some pearl just to have a nice finished product. So I like using the higher pile side of my wheel towel on the wheels and then use the lower pile on the tires. And then we're going, making a mess here one-to-one -one pearl. Spray a little on my race glaze brush. I've transitioned to one-to-one -to -one instead of straight up. It's easier to apply, applies more evenly, and I'm finding it lasting longer even though it's a little messier. I didn't do my normal prep to the tires because the tires have been maintained. So we'll let that sit, I'm going to go around and let that sit. By the time I get back around to the other tires, I'll be able to wipe this one off. I'll show you that. So that's the extent of that. All right, so again, take our lower pile, wipe off the excess, and we get a nice matte looking finish. That I find that if you just maintain the tires with pearl after every wash, so I clean it with Adam's rubber and tire cleaner and maintain it, it looked great for a long time. And not much else you need to do. So there's the simple tire dressing process. Piece of cake. All right, so let's do the exhaust here real quickly, hopefully quickly. So I'm going to put some Dr. Beasley's metal coat on here. The first thing I'm going to do is prep it with some IPA. So I'm going to use the same towel I use for solution finish. I'm going to flip it around. get the initial dust off with some IPA here. Actually what I'll do, I have all these suede's, so I'm going to use the suede towel. So procedurally on this, I'm going to cheat here and use the instructions because I haven't done this yet. Let's clean it. One small section at a time, spread evenly, and then we wipe it off. That's it. So I'll put this on here. 
spread it around. Do it on this one. it off. That's it. Now I don't have any experience with this. I haven't used this yet. I'm using a different section of the towel. The IPA is down here. So that's our quick little metal coat application. We'll see how that does over time. All right, so we're gonna be doing, this is, uh, it's called uh, Wolf's Nano Dressing Trim Coat. And I just talked to, um, I just talked to them uh, this week and I'm gonna be importing this. So I'm gonna be bringing in, same thing with the glass guard, which we'll talk more about here in a second. Um, this, you know, this, this product isn't like remarkable. It isn't gonna like blow your mind of how amazing it is and how it beads water and shoots water off or you can light it on fire. It's just good. It's the best, and I and I keep, I've departed from it so so much because I couldn't get it, and so now I'm gonna bring it in, solve that problem for all of us. You know, it's a good good product. There's nothing I haven't found anything better. Maybe Kamikaze ISM, um, but ISM it was 130 bucks a bottle and darn near impossible to get. So. Till the day they let me sell their stuff, which I don't think will ever happen. Um, it's you know using ISM for just the trim or buying a you know, $130 bottle of it. I don't think is all that viable. And when this stuff is really good too, and I don't remember what the price is. I think it's like 30 something bucks a bottle. It'll last you the rest of your life. So the trim isn't too bad, but notice we are pulling a little bit of a little bit of dirt off of here. Get up in here, so you can see I am hitting the paint a little bit. So I'll make sure to hit that with some wax, some colonite on our second coat. Oh shoot! Oh, there goes a little bit of our wax. Love this. This trim is way better than what you get on BMWs. This shiny black crap never does well. This will do. This is gonna look great with, uh, with, with the trim dressing on it. Another product that's good is Gion Trim. Both are, both are good. I think I like Wolf's a little bit better. And then on the windows, I like Wolf's glass much, much more. I do the rubber here on the window. And then I'm also gonna do the rubber up top here on the sunroof. Sunroof tends to get white and yucky. You can see what I'm pulling off here. So I'm gonna go around and treat the rest of the up, yeah, the, uh, the other side and then we'll come back and do our application of the product. All right, let me prep an app applicator. I ran out of suede, so I'll just take my bigger suede and cut it in sections so I can get a little piece out of it and cut it very straight there. And that's what I want. I want a little piece and I won't use an applicator pad for it. But I want that and then I want my microfiber towel. Here's how we do this. Towel. I'll shake up the bottle a little bit. Make sure we're good. Take my little applicator. 
and I'm gonna put it on evenly, as evenly as I can. Now, the towel wipe is gonna come back and make any adjustments to getting it on evenly. And I'm gonna do two coats of this like this. Man, I love this stuff. Get in this little rubber here, this little rubber joint. This does great on rubber and plastic. You can do it on both. If you get a little on the paint, it's okay. We'll wipe it off. When we do our wipe, let's go with this whole surface here. You should open up the door and get in and do the whole piece of rubber. And I like to take my towel and very gently flatten it out. It takes away any streaking. This doesn't streak as badly as Gion View or Gion Trim does. So you don't have to worry about it as much, but it gives you a really awesome satin looking finish on both rubber and plastic. It's amazing. Make sure we get it off of our paint. Look at that, it's great. So great. I haven't used this in a while. Let's do our driver's window here. So again, I'm gonna lay it on. And then I'm gonna come back and smooth it out. I'm gonna get in that little rubber channel. I'm gonna get the rubber inside the windowsill here. Get this rubber down here. And I want to get this little rubber piece here. The chrome really doesn't matter. I'm going to do the surround around this. And all this plastic around the mirror. I think I'm getting really Bob Rossi on you here today. <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna do the other window, right? I'm gonna do the, the rubber around the, the, whatever, the sunroof. I'm gonna do this drip channel cover. I'm gonna do the rubber around the windshield I'm gonna do the plastic, I'm gonna do the windshield wiper arms and the plastic around that. Uh, and then I'm gonna do the antenna in the back as well. So I'm gonna do all those and then uh, uh, I guess we'll be uh, working on the glass next. All right, it's time for glass. So what I'm gonna do to start is you know get old piece of bounty out here and I'm gonna IPA wipe this down and make sure to get up next to the trim here because I always get some extra trim coat on the window. Now if the windows weren't as clean I already wiped them down with eraser but normally Normally I'd clean them with Griot's, gla Griot's glass cleaner first and then do an IPA wipe down here. But because I already cleaned them with the eraser, you could clean them with the eraser as well. Then I'm doing my final wipe down here in prep for our glass sealant. So now we have our glass prepped, ready to go. Take our Wolf's, so this is Wolf's Nano Glass Sealant. Shake it up a little. I have a little bit of an oversized block here. I don't find the need for a backer, you know, the foam block that you wrap this around for the windows. I just take, apply, and we put it on the surface. 
You can put it in straight lines if you want. I like circles. And make sure we keep ourselves organized, get the entire surface treated. So a lot of people always have questions on glass. I keep glass simple. I don't want to put anything, especially on the inside. I don't want to put any anti-fog agents or any kind of funky crap. Uh, I use Griot's interior, or I'm sorry, Griot's glass cleaner and that blue towel you just saw me use, and that's it. As long as you keep them clean, and I find I probably clean them once every three months. I don't have issues with fog or spots or any issues. It's when you start introducing a bunch of other weird crap and attempting to deal with the window dirt and fogging and things like that. It's when I find you end up getting into issues where you can't keep them clean. So I'm telling you, Grios Glot Window Cleaner is amazing. Amazing because it's basically a mixture of isopropyl alcohol and, and distilled water of some sort. But they've got the formula down. It's cheap. Maybe not as cheap as some others, but cheap enough. One 32 ounce bottle is going to last you a year. So you can see why I do the window second because the trim coat inevitably gets a little bit on the window. And so that helps me I always clean it second and I wipe down. The side windows, I always put one coat of this Wolf's. The windshield, so the side and rear windows, I always put one coat. On the windshield, I put two. On the side windows, this will last a really long time. But here's one thing to note with this stuff. You're going to be really disappointed if you're not a discerning window guy like I am, right? I want my windows clean. I want them protected. And when I say not discerning, so let me give an example. You know, Michelle has the white Raptor. She doesn't give a crap. You know, when it's raining, she turns the windshield wipers on. Just leaves them on, right? When I'm... You know, I'll, I'll manage my windshield wipers because I want to manage what my windshield looks like longer term, right? Scratches and things like that. And, you know, occasionally, I'll, you know, if you leave the windshield wipers on and it dry wipes when you, oh, when you turn the car on, you're going to degrade this type of window sealant. This isn't, I, I don't know that I would even call this, I know it's a nano sealant, but it's less of a, it's less of a coating and more of a sealant, right? And so if you're, a, if you're not a discerning window guy, then you're gonna blow through this quickly on your windshield, and it's not gonna last very long. So you know, when I put it on Michelle's truck, I find she gets a couple of months out of it. When I put it on my car, I get almost a year out of it. So just keep that in mind. This, this product isn't like a, you know, a save the world, perfect water shooting off the car product. It's just a really good solution for, and it's the best I've found for a happy medium between longevity and performance. It's not, it's also not, it's not insanely hydrophobic, like water isn't going to shoot off of it. It'll, it'll bead water much like this colonite will. It'll bead it and sheet it like it's supposed to. And then one of the keys for me is that my windshield wipers aren't going to make all kinds of noise. You know, so that comes down to prep as well. So if you clade them, polish if needed with some CarPro Siri glass, this sticker is going to get destroyed here when I have to wipe this off. So if your windshield, if your windows are clean and decontaminated and you put this on, um, you're going to have really, really good results for a really long time. And then I put it on once every, you know, whenever I do my, my detail, every nine months, something like that. So let's go do the windshield together and then we'll, we'll come back and try to wipe this off after we do the windshield. It's already relatively clean, so now we want to make sure it's really clean. So if you just go and you wash your car and you uh, slap this on, it's certainly not going to work very well. You've got to go through the prep process, just like I talked about in the colonite video. You know, if your colonite went on and failed really quickly, it's because you didn't prep it right. 
he skipped steps. If you want it to work and work well and last a long time, you can't skip the steps. So these didn't need to be polished. Now, polishing glass is a bit of a more of a cleanup job than it is a scratch removal type job. Right? You could sit here polishing glass for hours and hours and you're not going to get much of a result. So keep that in mind. If your windshield is all scratched up, it's because you probably don't manage your wiper blades a lot like what I'm talking about or you don't use them dry. And you don't just let them, when it's raining, just let them sit there running or overrunning, I should say. I'll also do the side view mirror glass as well here. I like using Bounty because it's a little bit abrasive, right? It grabs a little and pulls the stuff off if there was anything on there. So this is where I'm going to use an applicator. I'm also going to do the sunglass. I'm going to sunroof glass. While we're at it. You know, and this is just like any wax or sealant. And we don't want to, you don't need to put excessive product on here. Just enough to make sure you're getting good even coverage. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go around and finish them and uh, we'll come back to you and show you wipe off. All right, so to remove, what I generally do is this. I'll wipe it. I need to get aggressive with this to get it off. And then we'll spritz with a little Grails glass cleaner. This requires a little more elbow grease to remove than the other steps of the process. Man, that's so nice. So same procedure on this. By the time we get back around, you know, as you're applying window by window, by the time you get back around to this, it's ready to remove. You know, so let's say it sits for five minutes or so. And then on the second coat, I'll actually apply a little bit to the wiper blades. I don't know if that actually does anything, but I like it. I always do it and it seems to work. So these waffle weave towels are so good. All right, so that's our glass and trim procedure for the car. Uh, the car's pretty much wrapped up here. I'm gonna put colonite on it. What I might do on the second coat of colonite, I'll do a wrap up video talking through the la all the step-by-step -step process, all the products used in this series and explain why and how and all that stuff. So anyway, thanks for watching this one. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. So what happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, foot to the floor.